Hey everyone, welcome to another Theory Breakdown. Now, this is a new series that I started with the first one, obviously, where I break down theory, as the name implies, because there's a lot of art theory that I talk about in my artwork analysis series that I don't really get a time to really focus on one or another. And for these, I want to make sure that I articulate all the points that I have regarding this and analyze artwork from a variety of different artists. So this week, I'm going to talk about a value composition. And more, and more specifically, it's going to be a three to four value composition. Now, you might have heard me talk about this in previous videos because it's something that a lot of illustrators, a lot of artists, I would say most of them, will have uh, three to four value compositions in their work. So why is that? We tend to think too complicated because reality is complicated. Even if, when you look around your room, I don't care how clean your room is, reality generally has more information that we can than we can handle. So we tend to overcomplicate the process of art because when we are trying to create uh, a world ourselves on the canvas, we take from reality and the amateurs tend to just copy reality or they kind of think complexity is everything, but it really isn't. We cannot replicate reality as it is because we are limited by physical materials. So in reality, light bounces off objects and bounces it into our eyes. Now the spectrum is so much more powerful than a canvas. So think about it this way. L How do I put it? Light is just, there's so many values, so many brightness levels. And if you really think about it, a light source, as I would have said in previous videos, a light source is fairly strong. In terms of a value, how can we possibly replicate the same value as a light source when, first of all, the in order to see the canvas, to see your artwork, the light has to bounce off the canvas into our eyes. So what I mean by that is it's going to lose some power when light reflects off of your canvas, meaning it is literally impossible to get light, um, to, to get paint that is the same power as the light source that is shining on it. Now, don't worry about the technicalities of that. Just understand that the my point is we cannot replicate uh, the higher ranges of brightness and we cannot replicate the lower ranges of darkness. So we cannot possibly replicate the same darkness that let's say you go into a haunted mansion with absolutely no light. We cannot paint that darkness. It's impossible. So we must simplify. There's no other way to go about it. And a lot of artists, uh, luckily in the, in the past, hundreds of years ago even, or even thousands, I guess. I don't, I don't know when they started this, but it's common knowledge that because we cannot replicate all those values, we have to simplify into three or four in the composition um, in order to make it readable. Again, those ten, why we settled on three to four is because it's the easiest way to have stuff stand out. Um, any nuances in between, they're just flavors, but in general, our eyes can really easily dis differentiate three to four different values in the composition, make them stand out, and it'll allow your elements in your piece to distinguish themselves. So let's get on to the artwork analysis part of it. 
So I want to start off with the idea that when we look at even a photograph, there's just so many elements going on. Now, even then, photographs already simplified for you. Again, because photographs are te tend to be put on a, on a sheet of paper, obviously. It means that it cannot replicate the same values as the light source that is shining upon it. Meaning, when we look at this in reality, we can assume that this red light here uh, and the uh, street lamps over on the back as well, they would be so bright we cannot paint it. Now, the photograph tried their best to replicate the contrast of the light to the background buildings, but it's just not the same. I implore you, no, actually, no, I shouldn't recommend this, but really look into a street view similar to this and tell me how can you possibly get the same value as the street lamps themselves. Now, of course, a lot of painters paint the city. So how do they do it? They simplify. So in this particular case, we can simplify this to three to four values. This is a uh, is Sin Yao Sang's work. He's very good at painting scenery uh, and really giving an impressionistic um, uh, take to it. Um, I, I, I would use Jeremy Mann from last week, but I already did, so I'm gonna look at another city painter. So notice how, how we can notice that right off the bat we see the dark passage over here. Ignore ignore the car. Uh, let's make it a bit better. So you see that the foreground buildings have been completely simplified into dark. Now, there are paint brushes to give a little bit of flavor here, but for the sake of clarity, let's assume this is just a big blob of darkness. So notice how even in our photograph here, our photograph does not simplify it like that. Therefore, it's a bit harder to push out the light. So notice how his Sin Yao Sang knows that he cannot possibly make pay, uh, put paint that is bright enough to create that feeling. So what does he do? He darkens everything else around it and simplifies the mass so that we feel the contrast between the street light, the car, uh, back lights, and the buildings in the foreground because they're juxtaposed, juxtaposed beside each other like that. So the three values here you could assume are the midtones here, we got the, the dark here, and of course everything else is light, I'm not going to circle that. So. If you squint or your eye, you would see this value composition come to life. Um, uh, I'll even bring it out for you. This will be a very good demonstration of just three values. Uh, now, of course, there's a lot more complexity to it. There's a lot of impressionistic brushstrokes. But assume that if we were to turn this into black and white, you can definitely see now, especially as I zoom in, zoom out rather, very clean composition, nothing too fancy. You can get away with creating composition with just three values like that. Easy to read. Let's look into another painter's work. Um, I forgot, this guy's name is Van, right? Um, forgot the last name, but anyways, same deal. Look how simple it is, same idea. Notice how simplified the entirety of the foreground buildings here. Now, of course, uh, unlike his Sin Yao Sang, he, uh, this particular artist, made more saturated midtones, which is completely fine, same deal. And of course, we have the really bright lights here. If this darkness is not simplified in such a way, then these lights will not read the same. A lot of artists make the mistake of just trying to add too many values. It's like, they look at the foreground buildings and their paintings and they're like, oh, they're not that dark, so I have to put all these values in. But notice how even if I were to, to brighten up the window here, this artwork here, you notice that it's really not feeling the same anymore. The lights are not feeling like the 
lit in this particular case because Van really push the values into a three value composition, we immediately see, oh, what am I doing here? There we go. We immediately see that this three value composition really pushes us out the darkness and pushes out the light at the same time. Um, again, you cannot paint pure darkness and, and the highest ranges of light. So you got to compensate by taking some artistic liberties, even when it's realism. Um, that's the common misconception. Realist painters always simplify. Um, you just have to, some, some of them are just disguising it in a much more uh, rendered fashion than others. So let's go into the opposite end. Um, let's look into more uh, simplified style. So let's look at this piece by Lime on Tumblr. Um, this particular artist interpreted uh, near automata characters. Now, near automata, um, if you uh, looked at my video talking about how brilliant how brilliantly simple the designs are, you realize because the designs are simple, they are readable very quickly. So it's very hard to kind of screw up drawing uh, the main characters because they are literally simplified into three values themselves, meaning they will always stand out and no matter how you draw them, unless you really break the rules of the characters, they, they're gonna work um, in the composition. So in this particular case, notice how um, you notice the, the, the brightest areas are the hair, obviously, and the moon. And then we look into the mid-tone, which is the majority of it, and then you look at the costumes, which are the darkest parts. Now, in this particular case, this artist didn't use super dark paint uh, because of stylistic reasons, which is fine. As long as you choose what is your darkest, what is your mid-tone, and what is your lightest, then you could create a three value composition. Um, it's up to you to create that universe yourself. It doesn't have to be pure white. It doesn't have to be pure black. It doesn't have to be a perfect mid-tone. Whatever works with you. Um, let's look into another cartoony artist. Uh, now this is Kevin Dart. He worked on a lot of big uh, franchises such as Powerpuff Girls but, uh, when it comes to backgrounds. Animation backgrounds in particular. They have to be reproducible. Um, they have to be something that other artists can work on as well. And one really good way of doing it is, of course, creating three value compositions. Now, uh, this one you could argue for four, but let's let's just really simplify it into three. Um, you could look into the shadows here. Obviously, that's the darkest areas. Um, the reason why I say four is because we can definitely distinguish the dark patches here and there like that. And then let's go with four. I, I think it still proves my point. Um, then we look into the the background buildings. You could say it's a light mid-tone here. Fantastic. And you could lump that up together as well. And um, uh, one particular thing I want to mention as well. All of these are interconnected. These masses of values are Inter, uh, are juxtaposed in such a way that it moves your eye as well. Which is why, again, if you get your three to four, four values working, you don't have to worry too much about colors because your composition will already have solved many problems. So you notice here again, everything is just very simplified. Um, even though there are uh, flavorful lines here and there, if you notice, you can zoom in here. Those are just flavors. They're just lines. They're not the big picture. And that's what I'm trying to get at. Um, always, again, resolve the big picture. And you can always do it really quickly with three to four values. Um, let's look into Fan Ho, a photographer. Now, he, is a, he was a legendary ph photographer uh, from Hong Kong. His work is different because a lot of photographers, they get into the habit of just keeping too many details because it's so easy. You could just take a photo of a city, you could take a photo of anything, and you'll get, the, you'll get all these details and you'll make a good photograph, right? But that's not really true. 
the best photographers, they always choose the right exposure, they choose the right composition in order to create that uh, a more simplified, a more cohesive composition. So in Van Hole's case, I always say he's like the grandfather of concept art because he used the uh, he used photographs as if he was doing a really video game style and it, it definitely stands the test of time. So we can even see here, we can simplify into three. Oh, this is great scale. Give me a second here. So here we can see big mass of dark midtone here. Obviously there's a there's a patch of darkness here. And the rest you could say there is a light triangle here. You could even say it's a four value composition. I might as well just put it here. So one, two, three, and four. Very simple very very simple and it gets maximum readability you could create even even for something that's supposed that is a realistic photograph it's not like he's adding he's using photoshop back in the 1960s but because of the perfect composition he can he managed to create a beautiful piece that looks simplified and it still looks realistic so this is downright proof that you do not need a lot of values and a lot of details going on to create a beautiful, realistic picture. So let's end it off with David Downton. Now, this is the more extreme way to prove my point. No, so now, David Downton is a legendary fashion designer. And a lot of fashion designers, they have to draw quick um, and they have to really accentuate the beauty of a figure. Now having a ton of details is probably going to take away from the stylistic aspect of their work and in a lot of cases you'll find that they the artists will all will tend to use three to four values in order to create um a, a, i guess you could say admittedly a pretty realistic uh, portrait of the models that they're drawing of course exaggerated to accentuate the beauty but I would argue that's even harder than just copying their features and such. So without really, I don't really have to say much. The red is a completely simple mass of mid-tone. We have the dark over here with the ink. Now fashion designers, they always cherish the ink. So ink, obviously, um, generally the darkest value of their piece. So they simplify a lot of um, what they see with the ink and of course we have the light skin here and of course the bag outlines here no need to do a ton of stuff very beautifully simplified piece by David Downton and I suggest you can always study fashion designers as well now this goes back to the entire point of the three to four value composition we have to simplify no ifs no buts again there is no way for an artist like david downton as skilled as he is to get every single value of what he sees on the model when he's drawing them the only way is obviously to simplify their features to simplify the clothing now david downton and other fashion designers they do it in a more exaggerated manner but the point still stands. As artists, we are always simplifying no matter what type of style we are going for. It's a matter of how we do it and what we choose to simplify. Um, anyways, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.